All right, so let's go ahead and bring up the gen2.org website in a browser. We'll click on Get Started Now and scroll down to Gen2 Handbook. The architecture you're going to use, AMD64 is the most likely. And we'll go down to installing the Gen2 install files. The first thing that we need to do is partition the drive. So we're going to use FDIS on dev SDA, the first hard drive. We're going to make a new primary partition. It's going to be 512 megabytes. We're going to make a second primary partition. This one will have the rest of the disk. We'll tag the second partition as type 8E. That's Linux LVM. And we'll set the first partition to be active. Now we write that to disk and we can start setting up the LVM. So we'll do PV create dev SDA2. Now we'll make the volume group. It's going to be called Gen2 and it's on SDA2. Now we'll start making logical volumes. So the N option is for the name. This is going to be temp. Capital L is size. This will be one gig. It will be the temp partition on the Gen2 volume group. So now I'm going to make one for the swap. This one will be four gig and another four gig for the var log system. And finally, we want the remainder of the disk space for the root partition. So this time we'll do lowercase l 100% free on Gen2. All right, so we've got a root partition of about 23 gigs a var log of 4 gigs, swap of 4 gigs, and temp of 1 gig. So let's go ahead and mount those partitions. So we will start out by mounting the root partition, dev mapper gen2 root in mount gen2. You know what? We can't mount things. We haven't made file to systems yet. So let's do that first. We'll make ext4 on dev sda1, dev mapper gen2 root, Dev Mapper Gen2 Varlog and Dev Mapper Gen2 Temp. Now we also need to make the swap partition, Dev Mapper Gen2 Swap, and we can turn the swap on if we activate it like this with the swap on command. So let's go back to that mount command I did a minute ago. There we go. Now we can mount the file system. So we need to make a couple directories so we can mount the rest of our partitions. So let's make boot, temp, and var log, and we'll mount those partitions as well. Mount SDA1, mount Gen2 boot, mount dev mapper Gen2 temp, and mount Gen2 temp, and we'll mount dev mapper Gen2 var log, and mount Gen2 var log. All right, so there's all of our file systems. So let's chmod the temp partition to be 1777. And now we need to go get a stage tarball. So it wants to make sure our date and time is correct. So 2350 in UTC. Yep, that's correct. All right, so let's go ahead and get a stage tarball. That's the base installation of Gen 2. We can go down here to find Gen2 mirrors, but I happen to know where one is near me. So if you don't, you can go look for one around here. I'm just going to go ahead and go to the one I know about. Mirrors.linux, IUEDU, Linux. All right, should be in Gen2, releases, AMD64, auto builds. And I want the current stage 3 AMD64. And we can see stage 3 AMD64. I don't want minimal. This is the one that I want. Stage 3 AMD64, the date and timestamp, tar xz. So I'm going to copy that link address. And we will go ahead and put that in the root. So we use wget, and I'll copy that link again because I've obviously uncopied it. 
All right. And now we're going to download that. And now we can go ahead and extract it. So we need to be in the Mount Gentoo location. And now we do tar XPF, the stage three. And we're going to want the rest of these commands in here too. I'll just copy and paste that. All right. Now you can also get digest and make sure that your release is good. I don't generally do that, but it's actually a good idea in practice, so you should probably do that. All right, now we can go on with configuring the compile time options. So let's go look in the etc portage make.com. I want to add the dash m arch equals native, native flag and we'll make the C++ flags the same as the C flags and I've got four processors here so we'll do J4 to use four jobs for the make file. There are other options you can configure but these are pretty much the standards. We'll move on to installing the base system. So we have the option to select mirrors. I'm not going to do that right now. It wants you to copy the DNS information. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. And now we need to mount the file systems we're going to use to actually set up Gentoo. We've got our stage three install, which is a basic install of Gentoo. We've got a few more configuration things to do before it will actually work. So we can just copy paste all of these things. You actually don't need the R slave ones if you're not going to use uh, system D, but I will go ahead and do them anyway, even though we're going to use OpenRC for this tutorial. You don't have to use system D unless you want to use the current version of GNOME. All right. The last step here is to go into our new installation, source the ETC profile, and if you want, you can change the prompt to show you that you are in the CH root. All right, next time we'll work on configuring Portage and setting up the rest of Gentoo.